So that I might die daily, get rid of the old me, perfect in your sight is what I want. Three minutes, three minutes, we're gonna start in three minutes, brothers and sisters. She flyer than the Pelican. You can catch her with her kids. Got a house, that's how she lives. Ain't another better search for earth, and you ain't finding them for Israel. It's the Lord's bush. She the one I'm riding with. Riding with. your light shine you left all that ratchet stuff behind now the only thing that you're screaming is proverbs 31 be the reason the reason for that virtue that virtue that you be bringing Woo. uh and your price is far above rubies ain't got time to be a nuisance because as is the mother so is the daughter but you ain't really worried because that righteous example of your husband you follow so it's head wraps friends is on chilling on the sap yeah you ain't caught up in the madness of diamonds and pearls and costly array and yeah you looking good but professing godliness is all that matters to you uh dress to the foot you ain't worried about the hater walk what you talk hold it down for the nation yeah support the troops and it ain't no imitating that's right in israel you know ain't no nation greater Shine on the world. 
We on? Yes. Israel. Stand and face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Heavenly Father, the God of our Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, we come to you, Father God, on you. Feast day, Father God, the feast of Nicanor, Father God. We ask you, Father God, that you heal those in the midst of us who are sick. We ask you, Father God, you strengthen our spirit. Continue, Father God, to strengthen us, Father God, in, this, in these last days, Lord. We give you our praise, our glory, Father God, to your Son, Jesus, the Christ, Father God. Forgive us another feast to celebrate. Uh, we thank you, Father God. We ask you, Father God, that you put your spirit on us, Father God, that we may continue to endure to the end, Lord. To endure to the end, Father God. Strengthen our spirit, Father God. We pray for each and every brothers, each and every sisters, who are all over, Father God, who are celebrating tonight, Father God. We ask you, Father God, that you may open their spirit, Father God. Bring their joy, Father God. Let, let your word be our joy, Father God, that we may take joy for, Father God, in your feast. He's sending them of you, Son Jesus Christ. We give you all praise or glory. Amen. on. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Salute. Down, face sisters, to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, happy feast. Uh, brothers, are we on? I, I'm not seeing nothing in the, in the screen. Oh, boy. Did they even hear the prayers? Thank you, ATL. Appreciate y'all. Happy Feast of Nick and all brothers and sisters. Happy Feast. All praises. All praise to the Most High. Another joyous memorial that the Lord commanded us to celebrate. You know? So all praises to the, to the Lord for that. You know, in here we celebrate our victories over our enemies. We don't That's celebrate right. Easter eggs and birthday cake, Christmas trees, none of that. The Lord ain't commanded us to celebrate that. You know, so we are here celebrating, once again, victories over our enemies. All praise to the Lord for that. Hey, officer, did you reach out to yourself? Brothers and sisters, give us a minute. Let your light so shine, so man might say a good word. Oh, you're an Israelite. Let the nation say what you are. Oh, I got 
got my dress on check, my friend just on black, my head wrapped on looking modest when I step out. Cause we're the greatest people on this earth. Oh, so I'ma let my light shine bright. Fixing myself, I'ma get it right. It's very dark here. I'ma need your light. I'ma follow anywhere you go, anywhere. Pick up, then I gotta let you know. Let you know, Julie, because I cannot let you go. Can I let you go? Julie, because I cannot let you go. I cannot let you go. I want you. Forever, you're too hard to find. You are a treasure. Rain on shine, shine. I'ma hold you down. I gon' waste your time. You was there for me all the time. Didn't know what I had. I was too blind. Yeah. You was always down for me. How did you put up with me? All right, you say you got it. I don't see nothing in there. Put it on the screen. We want to see it on the screen. I hope we trust y'all. Shalom, shalom, shalom. There you go. All right, Israel, we back. Uh, sorry about that. Thank you, ATL. Appreciate y'all. Shout out to the IT team. Uh, I ain't going to keep y'all for, lo for long tonight. Just going to go a couple of scriptures. Uh, tonight is uh, Nicanor. Lord willing, tomorrow night is uh, Poem. We have, listen, man, we have no complaint, man. Most I got to give us a lot of feast days. And when you come in these feast days, man, fix your face. All right? Uh, let's open up with uh, Leviticus 26. Let's start at verse... Uh, what is that, 40? Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity uh -huh. and the iniquity of their fathers. The iniquity of their fathers. With their trespass, which they trespassed against me. And that also they have walked contrary unto me. So have we been walking contrary to Mosai? Absolutely. That's what Deuteronomy 28 was about. That's what Deuteronomy 28 is about. We're still under Deuteronomy 28. Yes, we were contrary to Mosai. Because why? We turn our back on Mosai God laws. That's contrary. Christianity is contrary to Mosai God laws. Read. And that I also have walked contrary unto them. So because we were contrary to Mosai God laws, Mosai God also do the same thing to us. He walked contrary to us too. Read. And brought them into the land of their enemies. Uh huh. If America is the land of our enemies. Haiti, the land of our enemies. Jamaica. I know some of you are thinking, yeah, that's you. Because I heard a Negro say, that's my country. No, Negro, that's not your country. You're standing in stolen land. Read. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Guess what, brothers? We must accept. Deuteronomy 28. We must accept that punishment. That's the only way you're going to make it out of here. We have to accept that punishment. Read. Then will I remember my covenant. Then, then, after you accept that punishment, you repent, you come out of the filth of this place called America. 
Most I say, then I will lead you to what? Will I remember my covenant with Jacob? Then God is going to remember his covenant with our forefather Jacob. And also my covenant with Isaac. Our, his our forefather Isaac. And also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. So God said, then he's going to remember the covenant. God is not going to remember the covenant if you don't repent. He's going to remember the covenant after you accept the punishment and you repent. He's going to remember that covenant. I know what you're saying. Why is Deacon going to this? It's Nicanor. Oh, I'm going somewhere with this. Read. And I will remember the land. And God says he's going to do what? And I will remember the land. Is the land he's talking about is America? He's going to remember Haiti? No. Nope. He's going to remember Jamaica? No. Nope. He's going to remember Jerusalem. That's the land. That's the land. Read. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. So the land right now is desolate without us. Guess what, brothers? There's a spirit in the land. That's what you guys understand. The land actually spewed guys out. Because we did so much wicked in the land, the land could not take it anymore. The land actually spewed us out. Hey, we gotta, you got to go. Now, the land is crying for Mosaga to bring his son and his daughters back. Read. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. So now, all praise to Mosai. Now you see a couple of you see a couple of us here. That's to prove that we start accepting that punishment. We start accepting Dunami 28. Read. Because, even because they despise my judgment. Uh-huh. And because their soul abhorred my statutes. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, we 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 hate God's judgment. Christianity did a number on our people, man. I'm going to show you something later on. What, how, how crazy what Christianity did. I know Bishop cannot do a whole class about that thing, but Christianity did a number on our people, but read. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Read that again. And yet for all that. And yet for all that. What for all what? For all our wickedness. For all of our sin. God's, what is God saying? God saying, I didn't bring you in America and slavery to destroy you. That's what he's saying. He's saying, for all that we you did, I'm still not going to cast you away. I'm still going to have mercy. And let me tell you, we did some evil stuff. Whew. Some of us is more evil than the white man. Even to this day. But God said, for, even for all that, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It is a joy for times to know you in Israel. Life. <laughs> read. And yet for all that. You in verse 44? Yes, sir. All right, read. When they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them. You know what's so heavy about that verse? Brothers and sisters, you see Christianity, don't worry about them. They want third. They're going to come. One way or the other. What? That's what the scripture said. That's what he's saying. You cannot stop it. The one third is going to come. Don't worry. Don't worry when this pastor was up against us. Don't worry when they go to the white men against us. Don't, don't worry. The remnant of Jacob is going to find his way back. Believe that. Read. To the... To destroy them utterly and to break my covenant you see, with God them. Said, God said, I didn't bring you here to destroy you utterly. God didn't bring you in the end of your captivity to destroy you utterly. He bring you here, why? To teach you a lesson. You see, you got to look at it as the same way you got kids. When you punish your kids, you, you, you punish your kids to destroy them. You don't punish your kids to kill them. You punish your kids to teach them a lesson. You tell them, do not go outside. What did he do? He go outside just to try you. And when he go outside, he look at you. Why didn't you ask why you going outside? Just to see what you're going to say. That's that. What's that we did to Mosai? And you go, you say, you, and you look at him, you say, okay. 
As soon as foot touched outside, what you do? You took that bell. And now he's screaming. Oh, no. No, go ahead, scream. You're going to get it now. Because you try to play, you try to play game with me. I told you not to do it. It's the same thing Moses did to us. When Moses give us this, you know how to tell Moses, man, you don't know what they're talking about. Moses said, okay. I got, Moses said, okay, I got something for you. Go ahead, Cap. Going back to what you said, because you said this is the punishment of the Lord, right? Yep. So hey, the proof is, hey, can we get that? Ezra 9, 13. Ezra 9, verse 13. Because if y'all, your brothers understand the transatlantic slave trade still baffles science today. They don't see how we as a people survive that thing. When you look at that thing, that's the most atrocious thing that you could ever see. It, the things that happened to us on that ship, no other nation could survive the way that we survived. So read that verse right there. Ezra chapter 9 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds uh -huh. and for our great trespass, uh -huh. seeing that, our, that thou, our God, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. It, is, it said that the Lord punished us less than what we truly deserve for going contrary Damn, that was to his less? laws. That's less. The Damn. slave ship was less. Damn. Gator bait was less. The derby dose was less. The 45 caliber bullet was less. Abortion clinics were less. Damn. No other nation could survive that but the children of God. So, so God said, I'm show mercy. Yeah, the most I show mercy in that. I punished you less than what you truly deserve. Brothers so and sisters. So when that kid's. When you tell that, when you tell your son not to step out of the house, he step on. You're supposed to give him 50 lashes. You only give him 25. <laughs> you tell him, next time you get in the 50, buddy. Damn, that's less. Hey, uh, read up to verse 45, uh, Solomon. Yes, sir. Leviticus, go back. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 45. But I will... But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom now, I brought. Most I said, for our sake, he's going to remember the covenant of our ancestors. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's the covenant most I got make to our forefathers that he cannot break. So some of you thought it was something good you did. He just said a minute ago, you was wicked as hell. He just told you that. But he said, I'm going to remember because of your fathers, because of your ancestors. You know what? That's so important. Some of you don't know who your ancestors are. You must, listen, if you say you repent, you have to know who your ancestors are. The only way you're going to know your ancestors are, guess what? You have to know what tribe you are. You cannot, you cannot, if you repent as African American, you don't know who your ancestors are. If you repent as a Haitian, Jamaican, you don't know who your ancestors are. You have to repent as Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Ephraim, Naphtali, Reuben, Gad. That's how you have to, that's how you got to repent. That's to prove you remember who your ancestors are. Finish that. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors uh -huh. whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen. In the sight of what? In the sight of the heathen. Uh-huh. That I might be their God. I am the Lord. Guess what, brothers? In these last days, verse 45 is going to happen again. That's why I went there first. Verse 45 is going to happen again. America is the new Egypt. God is going to bring us out of this Egypt too. The same way bring our forefathers back of that uh -uh, old Egypt. The new Egypt America, God is going to bring us out of here too. Don't fear. Now, give me 2 Maccabees 14. We're going to start at verse 1. 2 Maccabees chapter 14 and we're, verse 1. We're not, I'm not going to keep you long. That's, why I, that's why I went all the way to 14. <laughs> I could have gone to 1. But verse 1, start at verse 1. 
After three years was Judas informed that Demetrius, the son of Seleucus, having entered by the haven of Tripolis with a great power and navy, Mm -hmm. had taken the country and killed Antiochus and Lysias, his protector. Now one alchemist who had been high priest and had defiled himself willfully. Later on, you're going to find that this guy, what is his name? Alchemist? Alchemist. That dude is a traitor. He reminds me of Bezalel. He reminds me of Judah Mac. He reminds me of all the traitors that's left out of here. Not, listen, man. In these last days, you know what you're going to find out? The spirit of Judas Iscariot is in effect. And get, get, you know how you're going to know? Remember what Christ said? You guys remember what Christ said? This generation shall not what? You guys forget that? Who remember? This generation shall not pass what? I, I cannot hear you. Somebody say law. Exactly. Guess what? That generation Christ was in, when Christ returns, they're going to be here. Guess what? Guess who was in that generation? Judas Iscariot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a lot going to be a Judas Iscariot spirit one in a while. So when you see that brother and sister betrayed you, guess what? Judas Iscariot all over again. Don't be surprised, brothers. In these last days, there's gonna be a, we're going to have a lot of traitor in the midst of us. Just mark my word. That's why I keep telling you, do not bring every man to your house. If they can kill you, they're going to kill you. Read. Now one alchemist who had been high priest and had defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the Gentiles, seeing that by no means he could save himself, nor have any more access to the holy altar, came to Demetrius in the hundred and one and fiftieth year, Uh presenting unto him a crown of gold and a palm, and also of the bowls which were used solemnly in the temple. And so that day he held his peace. Howbeit, having gotten opportunity to further his foolish enterprise... You hear that? He had opportunity to... Let me tell you, it was... In other words, it was all about power. Power, money... Fam. Oh, we got some of our people like that today. Read. And being called into council by Demetrius and asked how the Jews stood affected and what they intended, he, in- he answered thereunto. Those of the Jews that be called Assyrians, whose captain is Judas Maccabeus, nourish war and are seditious and will not let the realm be in peace. So you hear what he said? He's a traitor. He is talking to the enemy about his own people. Oh, I remember there was, there was brothers in the midst of us who did the same thing. They went to Esau. Read. Uh, on TV. And, he's, and he swear he's still an Israelite. He swear he's still in the truth. He went to the enemy. Because, listen, Judas Scariot thought he was still in the truth. Until he went and killed himself. I'm telling you, some of, some of, some of our people, me, it, listen, all our people that's going to betray us, they should do like Judas Iscariot. Go kill yourself. I didn't say it. That's what Christ said. I know people got mad at me. Oh, that's so mean. I didn't say it. Christ was mean. Christ said it would have been better if you kill yourself. So all the, all the, all the, all the, all the traders in 2018 should kill themselves. Yeah, y'all should go play in traffic, man. Go play in traffic. Do something. Traitors of your people. Yeah. Read. Yeah. What verse you in, officer? Verse 7. Therefore I, being deprived of mine ancestors' honor, I mean the high priesthood, am now come hither. First, verily, for the unfeigned care I have of things pertaining to the king. And secondly, even for that I intend the good of my own countrymen. For all our nation is in no small misery through the unadvised dealing of them aforesaid. Wherefore, O king, seeing thou knowest all these things, be careful for the country and our nation, which is pressed on every side, 
according to the clemency that thou readily showest unto all. So, you know what this remind me of? This remind me of the Negro today who say, that's my country. You hear, that's what this Negro saying. My country, tis of thee. Yeah. That's what they say. That's my, America, that's my country. I'm ready to defend my country. Yeah, you pledge allegiance to that country. Yeah. That country made you a, made your forefathers slaves 400 years. 400 years. Just think about that. 100% profit, Deacon. Every day for 400 years on your daddy's back, your grandfather's back. That's crazy. 400 years. 100% profit they got every day. But now it's your country. Yeah. You and some sick. of you, some of you happy with the apology. You're yeah, crazy. right now y'all are praying for Ukraine. You sick as all hell. Verse 10. You in verse 10. Yes, sir. Go ahead. For as long as Judas liveth, it is not possible that the state should be quiet. You hear what the Negro said? The Negro said, as long as this Israelite named Judah, Maccabees leave, there's not going to be no peace in the land. So basically what he's saying, he want the king to kill him. Read. This was no sooner spoken of him, but others of the king's friends, being maliciously set against Judas, did more incense Demetrius. And forthwith calling Nicanor, who had been master of the elephants, and making him governor of Judea. Master of the elephant mean he was an expert. He used the elephant for war. Read. He sent him forth, commanding him to slay Judas and to scatter them that were with him and to make alchemists high priest of the great temple. So this guy, what is his name? Ma alchemist? Nicanor. Read verse 12 again. Sorry. Verse 12. And forthwith calling Nicanor, who had been master of the elephants and making him governor over Judea, he sent him forth. Commanding him to slay Judas. Commanded him to kill Judah. And to scatter them that were with him. And to make alchemists high priest of the great temple. You know that we got people in the midst of that spirit? You know, everybody is criticized at UIC, but nobody's doing the work at UIC is doing. Listen, I'm not saying, I'm not saying for you to like me. You don't have to like me. But, if you don't like the way I'm doing it, go out there and do it better. That's right. That's it. Go out there and do it better. It's simple as that. But you criticize, but you're just sitting down. You, okay, you said you want to destroy UIC. But if you destroy UIC, who's going who's gonna to do the work we're doing? I don't see none of, nobody's doing it. Where the people, where, where's, your, where's your place where your people could gather like this today? Where I don't see that? it. Y'all ain't got it. But they have the spirit of this guy. Kill Judah that the people may be scattered. So guess what these Negroes are? They want to stay here. They love America. They want to stay here. They love Babylon. Because you want, isn't that the same thing the Pharisees, the Sadducees was doing, for, uh, uh, doing to Christ? They hated Christ, but they was not doing the work Christ was doing. They're, they're not doing their work what Christ is doing, but they say, oh, if we leave him alone, everybody will follow him. Okay, if he's not doing the work, who's going to do it? After you kill him, everybody's going to be scattered. Who's going to do it? Verse, verse 14. Then the heathen that had fled out of Judea from Judas came to Nicanor by flocks, thinking the harm and calamity of the Jews to be their welfare. Now when the Jews heard of Nicanor's coming, and that the heathen were up against them, they cast earth upon their heads and made supplication to him that had established his people forever and who always helpeth his portion with manifestation of his presence. So at the commandment of the captain, they removed straight ways from thence and came near unto them at the town of Desar. Now Simon, Judas' brother, had joined battle with Nicanor but was somewhat discomfited through the sudden silence of his enemies. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, Nicanor, hearing of the manliness of them that were with Judas and the courageousness. You know what the Bible said? He had the manliness. These men wasn't feminine. 
These men were men of wars. Read. Of them that were with Judas and the courageousness that they had to fight for their country. Durst not try the matter by the sword. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he sent. So, there was a time we have this spirit of war in us. There was a time we have this spirit of war. We stand up. We stand up for, to our, We stand up to the enemy for our people, just like you see we, we start doing today. The only difference today is we stand up with the Bible. We ready to defend our people. We ready to fight for the soul of our people. It's the same thing. Read. Wherefore he sent Poseidonius and Theodos and Mat Mattathias to make peace. Mm -hmm. So when they had taken long advisement thereupon. And the captain had made the multitude acquainted therewith. And it appeared that they were all of one mind. They consented to the covenant and appointed a day to so meet. So they're sent to make peace. You already know you cannot, you already know we cannot trust them. Read. Hey, and, give me, give me uh what is that? Psalm. What is that? Psalm 55 21? Yeah. Give me Psalm 55, 21 right quick. Psalms chapter 55 and verse 21. Let me tell you. Esau, Esau, evil. Even Esau, even Esau, Esau cannot trust Esau. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> you know what's so crazy? Even Esau don't trust Esau, but your Negroes want to trust Esau. You're all crazy. Go ahead. Dick, you want me to start at 20? Uh, fine. Yeah. He that put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him, he hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. See, what you guys don't realize is when Esau come in this part of the world, the so-called so American Indian, they were at peace with them. They received them. They brought them food. They thought they, thought they had a conscience. No. What you don't understand is a beast cannot have a conscience. An animal cannot have a conscience. It's an animal. You got, our people forgot that an animal have a conscience. No. That's why he said their word was as butter. Read. But, but war was in his heart. War what? But war was in his heart. Who know why he said war was in his heart? Let me see who's thinking. I want to see. Go ahead, I want to see who's thinking. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I'm not going to wait for the mic. Exactly. Oh, you're cooking with gas. That's exactly why he said that. We forgot that. We forgot Genesis. We forgot what our forefather Jacob tell this beast. No, I mean, uh, not Jacob, Isaac. He blessed them with the spirit of war. That's why the scriptures say this. You know what they're saying? This man always have war in his heart. Always. There's not. There, that's not. That's why there's never going to be peace in the earth until the Israelites took over. The only way to ever have peace in the earth, you gotta get will of Esau. Esau got to go. Why? Because he always think about war. Even when there is peace, Esau comes to the war. That's how they are. Look at all those peaceful countries. Esau going there, put division, uh, 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 put coup d'etat, killing the government, turn, them, uh, turn, turn the country into a civil war. Right. One tribe against another tribe. One tribe against another tribe. The white men always behind that. They don't know always behind that. Guess what? The same thing that's going in Russia. In Ukraine today, who do you think behind it? America. They're behind it. Right. Because the Bible says what? With that again, war what? But war was in his heart. War was in his heart. This man will kill his own mother to start a war. They kill their own people. They don't care. Just to start a war. Because that's how they are. That's how God made them. That's how God built them. That's the spirit God gave them. You finish that? 
His words were softer than oil. Yeah, so, so when this man opened his mouth, he sound real good. Ad, but in his heart, I'm gonna kill this nigga out here. Ad, we see that we see those smooth words right now on the TV screen. Yeah, got Biden, NATO yeah. talking so nice and smooth, and the Negroes fall for it every time. Oh man, Russia's so evil. They're so they're so backwards, and why are they oppressing the Ukrainians? You so you so um, what's the word? You so in love with America that whatever comes out of the, the media's mouth, you just go with it. You go for it. You go for it. No matter, you don't do no research. You don't look into things. Whatever's on the TV, you believe it. I, I, I'm watching videos. The brother pulled over by the cops. The brother put his hand up. The cops still shoot him. That's what you call pure hatred, man. And that's time and time again. It's not times one and instance. times again. It, 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 ha it happens over and over. Go back to Maccabees. I think you left off. Hey, Go officer, first. we're not gonna we're not gonna be here all night. Jump. What was you left off? Eighteen. Eighteen. No, uh, Nineteen. No, Jump. I'm sorry, twenty. <laughs> twenty. All right, keep read faster. Go ahead. Verse 20, so when they had taken long advisement thereupon, and the captain had made the multitude acquainted therewith, and it appeared that they were all of one mind, they consented to the covenant, and appointed a day to meet in all... So they consent to the covenant. Okay, go ahead. And appointed a day to meet in together by themselves. And when the day came, and stools were set for either of them, Judas placed armed men ready in convenient places, lest some treachery should be suddenly practiced by the enemies. So guess what? Judah, Judah was a smart brother. He was a smart man. So he said what he did. He didn't bring all his men in. He set certain men, certain place, just in case something pop out. Because why? He don't trust them. This is for those of you who trust the enemy. Judah, Judah, our forefathers did not trust them. Read. So they made a peaceable conference. Now Nicanor abode in Jerusalem and did no hurt, but sent away the people that came flocking unto him. And he would not willingly have Judas out of his sight, for he loved the man from his heart. He prayed yeah, him. All right. Go ahead. He prayed him also to take a wife and to beget children. So he married was quiet and took part of this life. But Alchemist, perceiving that the, love, that the love that was betwixt them and considering the covenants that were made, came to Demetrius. And so, remember who that guy is, Alchemist. He was, he was our people. So now he noticed how Judah and, and Nicanor make a covenant. Become, in other words, become friends. So, let me let, read what he did. But Alchemist perceiving that the love, sorry, but Alchemist perceiving the love that was betwixt them and considering the covenants that were made came to Demetrius and told him that Nicanor was not well affected toward the state for that he had ordained Judas a traitor to his realm to be the king's successor. Then the king being in a hey, rage. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. You know what this reminds me of? That's my army of the brother who say IYC is a head group. This reminds me of the same spirit who went to the white men to what you call these people? No, SPLC. Tell them we're a head group. But he got French on. That's that same Negro. Read. Then the king, being in a rage and provoked with the accusations of the most wicked man, wrote to Nicanor, signifying that he was much displeased with the covenant, and commanding him that he should send Maccabeus prisoner in all haste unto Antioch. When this came to Nicanor's hearing, he was much confounded in himself, and took it grievously that he should make void the articles which were agreed upon. The man so being... So now remember, these Nicanors make an agreement with Judah Maccabees. With Judah Maccabees, right? So now, he considering break that covenant, break that promise. What's that? What that treaty? What does remind you of? That's remind me of the white men and the so-called American Indian. 
That's with Mami of America who tell Russia in 1990 they will not extend NATO. Telling you, you cannot trust this white man. He, listen, the white man, the white man lies so much he lied to himself. He forget his own lie. <laughs> he, even though it's written on paper, he forget his own lies. He forget his own lie. He lied to a lie. <laughs> Read. The man being in no fault. But because there was no dealing against the king, he watched his time to accomplish this thing by policy. Notwithstanding, when Maccabeus saw by that... What? By policy. Read. Notwithstanding, when Maccabeus saw that Nicana being, uh, began to be churlish unto him, and that he entreated him more roughly than he was wont. So Judah Maccabee is not stupid. So he noticed these guys added to towards him start changing a little bit. This is for some of you who said, honey, I'll be back. I'm going to go hunting with Brad Pitt. Go ahead. Go hunt with them. Go ahead. Oh, I'll be back. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, my coworker have him a barbecue. I'm going to go to his house. You stupid as hell. The enemy is always going to be the enemy. Because you work with me, laugh with you, joke with you, that does not mean he's not the enemy. Keep that in mind. Mark, our forefather, Mark, Judah Maccabees, he know he was that enemy. He starts look, he starts seeing little trait. He starts seeing the warning sign. He starts seeing red flags. Some of you, you try to, to ignore the red flags. You turn the other way. Oh, that's my friend. No, that's not your friend. Your only friend is your people. Read. Perceiving that such sour behavior came not of good, he gathered together not a few of his men and withdrew himself from Nicana. But the so you see, wait, you see what Judah Maccabees did? He withdrew himself from him. He separated himself from him because why? He didn't ignore the red flags. He withdrew himself and said, yo, this guy right here is going to betray me. So he withdrew himself from him. Read. But the other... Knowing that he was notably prevented by Judas' policy, came into the great and holy temple and commanded the priests that were offering their usual sacrifices to deliver him the man. And when they swear that they could not tell where the man was whom he sought, he stretched out his right hand toward the temple and made an oath in this manner. If you will not deliver me, Judas, as a prisoner, I will lay this temple of God even with the ground. And I will break down the altar and erect a notable temple unto Bacchus. After you know what he said? He said, if you don't deliver Judah Maccabees, I'm going to destroy the temple and I'm going to make a temple to Bacchus. Bacchus is the, the, the god of uh, carnival. Drunken god, reveler. Read. After these words, he departed. Then the priests lifted up their hands towards heaven and besought him that was ever a defender of their nation, saying in this manner, Thou, O Lord of all things, who has need of nothing, was pleased that the temple of thine habitation should be among us. Therefore now, O holy Lord of all holiness, keep this house ever undefiled, which lately was cleansed, and stop every unrighteous mouth. Now was there accused unto Nicana one Razis, one of the elders of Jerusalem, a lover of his countrymen, and a man of very good report, who for his kindness was called a father of the Jews. For in the former times, when they mingled not themselves with the Gentiles, he had been accused of Ju Judaism, and did boldly jeopard his body and life with all vehemency for the religion of the Jews. Mm -hmm. So Nicana, willing to declare the hate that he bare unto the Jews, sent above five hundred men of war to take him. For he thought by taking him to do the Jews much hurt. Now when the multitude would have taken the tower and violently broken into the outer door and bade that fire should be brought to burn it, he being ready to be taken on every side fell upon his sword, choosing rather to die manfully than to come into the hands so, of the wicked. So Nicanor tried to take this brother because he said, if I take them, that's going to hurt the Jews. So the brother said, I would, I would rather 
kill myself than you taking me alive. So he fall into his sword. Read that again. He fallen. What verse one? Forty one. Uh, forty two. Read forty two again. Choosing rather to die manfully than to come into the hands of the wicked, to be abused otherwise than than beseem his noble birth. So this brother rather die than to than rather rather die than to be abused by the wicked. Read. But missing his stroke through haste, the multitude also rushing within the doors. He ran boldly up to the wall and cast himself down manfully amongst, among the thickest of them. So this brother jumped from the building. Read. But they quickly giving back and a space being made. He fell down into the midst of the void place. So he fell fall, he fall flat on the floor. Read. Nevertheless, while there was yet breath within him. And he still wasn't dead. Read. Being inflamed with anger, he rose up, and though his blood gushed out like spouts of water, and his wounds were grievous, yet he ran through the midst of the throng, and standing upon a steep rock, when as his blood was now quite gone, he plucked out his bowels, and taking them in both his hands, he cast them upon the throng, and calling upon the Lord of life and spirit to restore him those again, he thus died. So, that brother right there, he know, he know he's going to come back. That's why he's calling the Lord to restore them again. Because he know in the kingdom, Mosiah is going to restore him again. You know how much pain that is? You can imagine that thing. He said he told, he take his guts out. Uh, chapter 15. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's, let's start chapter 15, verse 1. Second Maccabees, chapter 15, verse 1. But Nicanor, hearing that Judas and his company were in the strong places about Samaria, resolved without any danger to set upon them on the Sabbath day. Nevertheless, the Jews that were compelled to go with him said, Oh, destroy not so cruelly and barbarously, but give honor to that day which he that seeth all things have honored with holiness above other days. So he was trying to come attack them during the Sabbath day. Read. Then the most ungracious wretch demanded, if there were a mighty one in heaven that had commanded the Sabbath day to be kept. And when they said, there is in heaven a living Lord, a mighty and mighty, who commanded the seventh day to be kept. Then said the other. And so I brothers, so brothers. Where can I go to prove that the Sabbath was something Musa God commanded us to be kept? That's talking about the seventh day Sabbath. Only one why hand I got, is why, up. Why only see one hands up? Every hand should be what up. What is wrong that. with these brothers? Holy! <laughs> Everybody doesn't know the, the scripture for the Sabbath. Go ahead, Cap. Calling somebody. These brothers. This brother right here. I don't know his name. Yeah, yeah, with, with, with the glasses. Yes. Say it again. What does it say? Go ahead, read it. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day. From all his work. That's, a, that's where you would go to prove that God tell us to keep this habit? Somebody else. Shalom, leadership. Exodus 20, uh, 8 through 11. Let's read that. Solomon, Exodus. Solomon, let's read that. Everybody should know that. Everybody should know that, y'all. More. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It's Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's the seventh day. Read. 
In it thou shalt not do any work. You shall not do no work. Thou, nor thy son, uh -huh. nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Your whole household, your whole family should not, should keep the Sabbath. Read. That's For, the whole thing. Uh, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and okay. rested the seventh day. You can go back. Go back to, to Maccabees. I think you're in verse 12. Verse two, 4. Read verse. Okay, go ahead. And when they said, there is in heaven a living Lord and mighty who commanded the seventh day to be kept, then said the other, and I also am mighty upon the earth. And I commanded to take arms and to do the king's biz business. Mm -hmm. Yet he obtained not to have his wicked will done. So Nicanor, in exceeding pride and haughtiness, determined to set up a public monument of his victory over Judas and them that were with him. But Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember... So, so this guy, basically this guy tried to put fear on Judah Maccabees. But Maccabees, no, he have, he, in other words, he have faith that most High God is going to help him win the war. So what he do? He exalt his people. You see, you know why, you know why I say this? Every Saturday, that's what we're trying to, to, to do with y'all. Some of you thinking, why they read the same scripture every Saturday? We try to exhort you. We try to prepare your mind for what's coming. Because guess what? If you already have in your mind death is coming, when death comes, you ain't going to care. You'll be like, okay, whatever. Because you already know what's coming. You prepare yourself. You already talk to the wife. Hey, if I go to him, I don't come back. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. You already talk to the kids. Kids, there's, 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 there's going to be a time I might, I might not come back. I want you guys to do this. I want you guys to do that. You prepare your mind. You prepare the mind of your wife. You prepare the mind of your kids. I'm not saying it's easy. But guess what, brothers? It's a must because it's going to happen. It's not no maybe. It's going to happen. So prepare your mind for it. Read. But to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven. And now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. And so com comforting them out of the law and the prophets, and withal putting them in the mind of the battles that they won afore, he made them more cheerful. Stop. Read that again, please. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets. So, what do we use to comfort you guys every Saturday? The Bible, the law and the prophets. What the prophets do. The law. That's how we comfort each other through the law. That's what Judah Maccabees did. He comforted his people to the law and the prophets. The word of God is our comfort, brothers and sisters. I don't know about you. I got nothing left. I got nothing to lose. It is what it is, man. Read. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets. Uh -huh. And with all putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore. So what did Judas Iscariot did? He reminded them. Hey, remember the war we went back then? Is this not different? We're going to win this too. <laughs> That's what we tried to tell you. So he put in their mind. We reminded them. Guess what? Every one of us in this room need a reminder sometime. We need a reminder. Brother. We went through some tough time back then. Remember back then? We went through some tough time. Man, this is nothing, man. Why are you worried? You, we, me and you wasn't worried back then. Why are you worried now? Go ahead, Cap. Hey, that's why the Lord commanded on these holy days to celebrate the victories over our enemies. Yeah. Because sometimes we need that reminder, man. Because we get, we get, uh, we get forgetful real quick. You understand? So the Lord put it in the, in the scriptures. Hey, man, remember this victory right here. Go and celebrate. Have a feast day. Get a strong drink. Remember the victories over your enemies. Listen, the enemies over there killing themselves, each other. Tonight, we're going to have some drinks. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you all, you better, better recognize. 
<laughs> Talking about, oh, I'm sad. Oh, people is dying over there. Man, hell with them. Hey, you see what they're doing to your people right yep, now? Uh -huh. and, right now. All the, all the niggas, you niggas can't leave. You stay right here. Let, let, let the, uh, the, the white Christians leave. Y'all can get up out of here. You niggas, you stay right here and suffer. And guess what? Your black leaders are saying nothing, nothing. about it. I haven't seen nothing from no black celebrities, nope. no black pastors, no black nobody that, that has a platform and saying nothing about what they're doing, the Ukrainians are doing to the black people there. Not a damn thing. There's crickets you. over there for that. Tonight, Lord willing, tomorrow night, have some drink. That's right. Hey, man. Hey, if you, if, uh, it's, it would be better if you don't go to work. I'm telling you, just celebrate. Uh, me, I'm, I know what I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate the, the, the enemy kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, hey, we should, you should play it in the, on the TV on the side and <laughs> throw up a toast. <laughs> hey, what verse you in Solomon? Uh, the end of verse 9. You're in the end of verse 9? Uh, what time it is? Come on, give us good. Keep on reading. He made them more cheerful. And hey, uh, oh, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. I want that picture. Not, not yet. And when, and when he had stirred up their minds, he gave them their charge, showing them therewithal the falsehood of the heathen and the breach of the oaths. Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with defensive shields and spears as with comfortable and good words. And beside that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed, as if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. You, you, know, what's so, you know what's so heavy about this? He told them a story to, to just boost them. And guess what? This story don't have to be true. I'm the one who knows. <laughs> I'm the one who knows it's not true. But guess what? I'm going to tell you whatever I have to tell you to put you in their right spirit. Guess what? That's what the leader do. That's what the leader does. A leader inspires the people. A leader Open the eyes of the people so they can see the same vision he see. That's what the leader do. So that's what he, that's what he did. He tell them something. He said, yeah, listen, I got to tell them something so they can see what I see. So they can believe what I believe. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? All our faith is not the same in the same level. Some of us got that faith up here. Some of us got it down there. But guess what? Those who got their faith up here is their job as the leader to inspire the people to make sure you, you faith is increased up to here too. Those of you who didn't believe, our job is to make you believe. Listen, man, why are you so worried? Don't worry, most I got, got you. Read. And this was his vision, that Onias, who had been high priest, a virtuous and a good man, reverend in conversation, gentle in condition, well-spoken also, and exercised from a child in all points of virtue, holding up his hands, prayed for the whole body of the Jews. This done, in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hair. So, so when we hold our hand up when we're praying, it's in the scriptures. He says he's holding up his hand and praying for all the Jews. Read. This done, in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hairs, an exceeding glorious, who, who was of a wonderful and excellent majesty. Then Onias answered, saying, this is a lover of the brethren who prayeth much for the people and for the holy city to wit Jeremiah the prophet of God. So brothers, there's nothing wrong praying for each other. We are supposed to pray for each other. We are supposed to pray for the leadership. There's nothing wrong with that. Lift each other up in prayers. Exercise to strengthen each other's spirit, and especially in these last days. Exercise to heal each other. Especially in these last days, especially to strengthen those in the midst of us that are weak. Some of them, some of us is weaker than others. It's mostly I got to give that brother the same strength you have. Not to put each other down. It's not the time for that. It's time to pray for the nation. Pray Mosai that he bring back the nation of Israel, man. Read. Whereupon Jeremiah, holding forth his right hand, gave... Hey, hey, hold on. Brothers. Your brothers is killing me tonight. The screen going off. We off. We off Facebook. What is wrong with y'all tonight? 
That means somebody's over there that doesn't not supposed to be over there. That's what that means. Everybody just uh, stand by. Stand by. We're having technical difficulties. Stand by. All right, we back. <sighs> Solomon, what, where you at? Verse 15. Whereupon Jeremiah, holding forth his right hand, gave to Judas a sword of gold, and in giving it spake thus, Take this holy sword, a gift from God. Solomon, Solomon, where you at? Verse 16. Uh, 2 Maccabees 15, verse 16. Jump, jump, jump. Actually, uh, go ahead, read faster, please. Take this holy sword, a gift from God, with the which thou shalt wound the adversaries, thus being well comforted by the words of Judas, which were very good, and able to stir them up to valor. So and you see that? The word, the word of Maccabees strengthened them up. He stirred them up. He stirred the spirit up. I don't know about you. Some, those of you teaching this street, sometime on Saturday, you ever feel like, you feel discouraged? Guess what? That's why we did that thing before camp start. That's why we did that thing. A. What time it is? War time. What time it is? War time. That's why we did that. Why? Well, you guys didn't know why we did that? We did that to stir that spirit in you. To put you in that moon. To put you in that mode. That war mode. Because some of you come to camp. You don't have. You're not in the war mode. Some of you wish you can stay home with the woman. We got to take that out of your head. We gotta, some of you wish you can stay with the babies. We got to take that out of your head. No, let the woman stay with the babies. You might got to be in the war mode. And you might only have to be in the war mode. Don't worry about the woman. Don't worry about the children. You're good. You're you among brothers. That's why we did that, to put you in the war mode. That's what Judah, Judah Maccabees did. He put him in that war mode. Read. And to encourage the hearts of the young men, they determined not to pitch camp, but courageously to set upon them and manfully to try the matter by conflict, because the city and the sanctuary and the temple were in danger for the care that so they... So these men was ready to defend the city and the temple. They were, in other words, they were ready to die for it. Read. For the care that they took for their wives and their children, their brethren and kinfolk, was in least account with them, but the greatest and principal fear was for the holy temple. Also, they that were in the city took not the least care, being troubled for the conflict abroad. And now, when as all look what should be the trial, and the enemies were already come near, and the army was set in array, and the beasts conveniently placed, and the horsemen set in wings, Maccabeus, seeing the coming of the multitude and the diverse preparations of honor of of armor, sorry, and the fierceness of the beast, stretched out his hands towards heaven and called upon the Lord that worketh wonders, knowing that by knowing that victory cometh, cometh not by arms, but even as it seemeth good to him, he giveth it to such are worthy. So when you see the when you see the army of the enemy. He see, he see the elephant, all this. You know what he did? Instead of fear, he raised his hand up towards Mosai. Because he know it doesn't matter, the, it doesn't matter the, the amount of military you have. It doesn't matter. He know he can beat you no matter how, how, how big your military is. Because why? He has faith in Mosai. Read. Therefore, in his prayer, he said after this manner, O Lord, Thou didst send thine angel in the time of Ezekiel, king of Judea, and didst slay in the host of Sennacherib a hundred fourscore and five thousand. You see, you see what uh, you see what Maccabees pray. You see how he pray. You know what he did? He repeat what Mosai get did back then. And guess what, brothers? The only way for him to do that, he had to know the scriptures. So when you pray, guess what? We my Mosai about our forefathers. We my Mosai, the covenant he made to our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We my him. That's your job. There's nothing wrong with that. We my Mosai. Listen, Mosai, you said if I repent, you're gonna forgive. You're gonna. You're not gonna remember my sin no more. 
Mosiah, the same thing you do for my forefathers, do it for me. That's our job. That's how, that's how a prophet pray. He remind Mosai the victory Mosai gave his forefather back then. He said, Mosai, I want you to give me that same victory today against those enemies. Read. Thou didst send thy angel in the time of Ezekiah, king of Judea, and didst slay in the host of Sennacherib and hundred four score and five thousand. Wherefore now also, O Lord of heaven, send a good angel before us. You hear what he said? Send a good angel. Do not say, you know, you know we got evil and good angels, right? He said, do not send an evil angel. Send a good angel. Send a good angel to kill these, these damn heathen. So this angel's going to do some good here. Oh, hell yeah. Some good killing here going to go on. This angel's going to put some people to death. You know that's what I mean? That's what I mean at their job. When they, he didn't try to get you fired, Kwamos had to send that good angel in his behind. Knock his butt off. Yep. Call Mosai and that, and that demon. Please, Mosai, don't let them come back tomorrow. Put something in that demon. Read. For a fear and dread unto them, and through the might of thine arm, let those be stricken with terror that come against the holy people to blaspheme. That's why we are the holy people. Read. And he ended thus. Then Nicanor and they that were with him came forward with trumpets and songs. But Judas and his company encountered the enemies with invocation and prayer. So that fighting with their hands and praying unto God with their hearts. So you see that? As they fight with their hands, they were praying most like God with their mind. They was praying. The heart is the mind. Most like God was in their mind. Guess what, brothers? When you're in the, when you're in the street teaching, you what should not be in your head. You kids should not be in your head. Most I got should be in your head. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. As they were fighting with their hand, God was in their mind. Go ahead. Hey, D. Uh, that prayer, right, in verse 24, and through the might of thine arm, let those be stricken with terror that come against thy holy people. I don't want you to forget. You didn't forget that picture, did you? No, I didn't. You, no, you going to no. go over that? Hey, hey, put that picture up. Yeah, because our people right here was not praying for the enemy here, for good, for their good. They were praying for their destruction, y'all. That's what our people was doing. That's how, that's how destroyed and brainwashed that, we are today. That's how, that's that's how, how far, far we've we fall. fallen, y'all. That's how far we've fallen. Now fall. we're praying Look for Look at what we people. pray for. You put that up? Yeah. Now this is what we pray for today. Read that. Can you read this? Right, now let, now right. see what we're praying for now. Now we're praying for one oppressor over the other. Can you read this, officer? Black pastors and priests calling black faithful to pray for Ukraine. Damn. Yet never did for Congo, Haiti, Somalia, Mauritania, blacks in Brazil and U.S. Yep. yep. That, that sounds about right. You know what's so crazy? As Russia... In the Ukraine, America drop a bomb in Somalia. Niggas ain't praying for that, though. Niggas ain't praying for that. That's how far we fall. Judah Maccabees was praying for Mosaka to destroy the enemy. The nigga today is praying for Mosaka to save the enemy. You cannot make this up. That's how far we fall. That shows you how far we fall. But guess what, brothers? We got to be different. Because you know why? We have the spirit of our forefathers. We got to pray for the destruction of the enemy. Sisters too. We got to pray for the destruction of those who hate us. Those who don't want to see the nation of Israel rise. We got to pray that most of God kill all, every single one of them. That's how, that's how prayer is supposed to be. Don't pray for no peace. No love. Talk about one love. Get the hell out of here. Hey, y'all got to read Luke 18, man. Christ said this prayer ought always to be prayed. You understand? And when, we, when it reads on down, it's talking about praying for the destruction of your enemies. Christ said always pray for that thing. Always pray for the destruction of the enemy. Get, you know, find it. Hey. Yeah, yeah, get it. Luke 18 and 1. This is for your, just in case you got some Christian here in the damn room. I cannot stand it, them Christian. 
Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them this, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, there was in a city. That's what he said. Men always ought to pray, not to faint. You know what means faint? Do not stop. Never stop. Even when you're in your job, you should keep that prayer in your head. Read. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming hey, she... Hey, you know, you know what, who the widow is? The widow is the Israelite. He said the widow do not want to leave me the hell alone. Eventually he said, you know what? The only way to get rid of this widow, I got to revenge her. Guess what, brothers? Don't you got, don't we want revenge? I don't know about you. I don't want no apologize. I don't want no apology. I want payback. You got to ask, you got to, you got to, listen, do not leave Mosai alone. Ask for payback every second. We need biblical justice. Yes. Biblical reparations. Biblical. Not, not, not according to uh, Negro NAACP reparations yep. and all that nonsense. Biblical reparations. Judgment. Mosai killed them, killed them, killed these niggas. I'm telling you. Put them to death. D, they look nervous, D. No. Don't get, nerve, don't get scared. Because some, hey, some of you are comfortable in that and you, and you, and you uh, whatever treatment they put you in. You in verse 27? Uh, back in Maccabees. Oh, you didn't, didn't finish. finish. You, didn't finish. Uh, you didn't finish your prayer, finish man. Your... Yes, sir. Verse 5, uh, verse 6. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, mm -hmm. and shall not God avenge his own elect? Which shall not God avenge his own elect? Who's the elect? Where well, are we going to prove that? Isaiah, Isaiah 45 and 4. Read. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Which cry day and night unto him. Though he bear his, we got to cry day and night. Read. Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Hmm. So, Deek, the faithful are going to be saying that prayer day yes. and night. Yes. Day and night. Day and night. The faithful is going to keep saying That's what the faithful night. is going to be praying right there. You know, hey, Deek, you know what's so heavy? Even those that were slain are crying day and night yeah. for the revenge to happen. Yeah. When you read, what is that, Revelation yeah, 6 Revelation, and 10? Yeah. They ask him, when are you going to revenge us? When you going to revenge us? When you going to revenge us? The Negro, he, the Negro, he got too much fried chicken. Right, 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 right. He didn't too much fried chicken. He's not asking Mosai when he going to revenge him. The Negro forgot he's in captivity because he got fried chicken. But his forefathers that already passed, he's crying to Mosai. When are you going to revenge us? When are you going to revenge us? The white men say, no, nah, here you go, some chicken. Forget about Here's some chicken, Nigo. You forget about everything I've done to you. Verse, go back. You in verse 28, right? Read faster. Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 28. Now when the battle was done, returning again with joy, they knew that Nicanor lay dead in his harness. You hear that? The battle is won. The battle is won. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. You didn't read verse 27. Yeah, verse, I was just about to say, we got to jump up. See, you see Solomon, man? <laughs> hey, you, I think this brother is jealous because that was Levi. Ah, oh. oh, come on, D. Judah don't bear no hatred for Levi. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Solomon. Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 27. Uh -huh. So that fighting with their hands and praying unto God with their hearts, uh -huh. they slew no less than 30 and 5,000 men. They killed 35,000 men. 35,000 devils dropped dead. And you crying for one. The hell is one with you? Who the hell raised you? We don't have 35,000 yet who dropped dead in Ukraine. 
the hell you praying for them for? The hell is one with you. Read. For through the appearance of God, they were greatly cheered. Now when the battle was done, returning again with joy, they knew that Nicanor lay dead in his harness. Mm -hmm. Then they made a great shout and a noise, praising the Almighty in their own language. You hear that thing? They're praising God because they know the enemy is dead. Read. And Judas, who was ever the chief defender of the citizens, both in body and mind, and who continued his love toward his countrymen all his life, commanded to strike off Nicanor's head and his hand with his shoulders <laughs> and bring them to Jerusalem. He said, cut his head and cut both of his hands. You know why he cut his hand? Because he's the one who put his hand up against the city and against the temple. He said, hey, chop his hand off. You see, there was a time our forefathers was in the right mind. See, today the Negro, the Negro today, I don't know what's wrong with us, man. The Negro today, pray for them. You're crazy. Read. So when he was there and, and had called them of his nation together and set the priests before the altar, he sent forth them that were of the tower and showed them vile Narcanor's head in the hand of the blasphemer, which with proud brags he had stretched out. So you know what he did? He cut his head and he put his head up like that. So everybody can see it. This is, this is the one that was running his mouth. Now look at him. God put him to death. Read. Which with proud brags he had stretched out against the holy temple of the Almighty. And when he had cut out the tongue of that ungodly Nicana, he commanded that they should give it by pieces unto the fowls. And you hang up. He cut his tongue and give it to the bird to eat. And this is a godly man doing this. Oh, yeah. This. This oh, is yeah. Godly right here, D. Oh, yeah. You know, hey, you, you can't know, forget some that. people in there right now are saying, that's not the love of Jesus. This is the love of Jesus we read about right here. You see, what you guys mistaken is this right here is the black Jesus. That's right. You see, you guys talking about the white Jesus. This is the black Jesus. The black Jesus, he said, cut his tongue and give it to the bird to eat because he was wanting his mouth against Mosai. Oh, I can't wait for this to happen again. Woo. Read. And hang up the reward of his madness before the temple. So every man prays toward the heaven, the glorious Lord, saying, Blessed be he that have kept his own place undefiled. He hanged also Nicanor's head upon the tower, an evident and manifest sign unto all of the help of the Lord. And they ordained all with a common decree, and no case to let that day pass without uh, solemn, solemnity. No, no, where you at? Uh, verse 36. You lost me. Verse 36. Jeez, you in verse 36 already? Yeah, you told huh? me read fast. Damn, you, yeah, you, you do it fast. Read, verse, hey, read yeah. verse, I'm sorry, read verse 35 again. Yes, sir. He hanged also Nicanor's head upon the tower, uh -huh. an evident and manifest sign unto all of the help of the Lord. So he showed the evidence that the enemy is dead. Verse 20, 26. And they ordained all with a common decree and no case to let that day pass without solemnity, but to celebrate the 13th day of the 12th month, uh -huh. which in the Syrian tongue is called Adar, the day before Mar Mardikeus So, So that's why we celebrated the day of Nick. Nicanor. Because we kill him, we celebrate it. We're not going to pray for them. So when you celebrate tonight, remember what our forefathers did to these devils. You should celebrate. Don't be afraid to celebrate. Eat, drink, be married. You should have a joy in your heart. Don't come here with no sad face. Dang. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear your problem. Right. As a matter of fact, do not come here with your problem. Right. Right. Leave, your problem leave your problem outside. We come here to celebrate the, 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 the killing of the devil that was coming against our, 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 our forefathers. That's what we're here for. We're not here to hear your problem. Cap, you was going to say something. Uh, 37. Thus went it with Nicana, and from that time forth the Hebrews had the city in their power. Mm -hmm. And here will I make an end. And if I have well, and if I have done well, and as is fitting the story, it is that which I desired. 
But if slenderly and meanly, it is that which I could attain unto. For as it is hurtful to drink wine or water alone, and as wine mingled with water is pleasant and delight of the taste, even so speech finely framed delight of the ears of them that read the story. And here shall be an end. Okay. Hey, give me that scripture. Exodus 15 and 3. Wait right quick. And Exodus. Then, and then go to second. Uh, we, are about, we are about to close. Read Exodus 15 and 3 right quick. And then go to second Ezra. 15. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. The Lord is a man of war. What? The Lord is a man of war. God is a man of war. Brothers, when we see war, we should be happy. We are, we are worshiping a God that's love war. We should have that same spirit. When war comes, we should welcome war. Some of you, some of you, you don't even, you don't even like confrontation in your own house. You're afraid of confrontation in your own house. You should welcome confrontation. Because confrontation is going to tell you where your wife mine is at. Some of you, you always, some of you, you, if you see when there's scripture inside your own house, because I, I, I just want it to be peaceful in here. I don't want to offend her if I bring the scriptures. No. You should look at, look just looking forward to confrontation. Yeah, because you want to see where she at. Yeah, you, you want to well, see where I she at. I want to know what spirit my wife dealing yeah. with. Let me open the scriptures and find out. Yeah. Let's see, let's see if she's going to adhere to this. Or she's going to buck against the word of God. Exactly. Second, we're going to close with Second Ezra. Chapter 15, we're going to start at 14. So, I'm going to bring this. This is one of the script, my, my favorite scripture. I forgot to bring this scripture Saturday in my class. I'm going to close with this. Second Ezra. What you see going on right now, Russia, Ukraine, is God's judgment. It's prophecy. God want listen. Remember, brothers, in the middle of the all the destruction, our salvation is come. That's why I say we should pray for it. We should welcome it. We should enjoy it. Buy yourself some popcorn. Put your foot up. Put your feet up. Relax and enjoy the show. These things have nothing to do with black folks. They have nothing to do with us. Hey, Sadiq. So in, in all actuality, we shouldn't only just be praying for Ukraine. We should be praying for Russia and Ukraine that they continue the battle. You understand? They supposed to, we're supposed to pray to the Lord that they continue. Did you see what in Ukraine? They, they, they don't want they stop black people from getting in the train yes, to, to yes. escape the war zone? And you got the enough to pray for them? You lost your foot. Ugh. Bleep, 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 bleep. Hey, you know what's so heavy, Deke? Well, what, what Deke's bringing out, who remembers that history when the judgments were taking place in Egypt? Where were we? Where were we? Doing what? It's dark over there, but we had light. Most I was jacking it behind up, and we watched the show. That's what Deacon said. <laughs> Verse 14. Let's go. Second Ezra. Let's go. Let's, I want you guys to listen to these scriptures. We're careful. This Se is prophecy. Listen to these scriptures. We're careful. And meditate on this. Listen. This is God talking. Not my word. This is God talking. Let's read the word of God. The word of Jesus. This is the love of Jesus. If, it, if I was saying white Jesus, I would say Jesus. But the black Jesus, you got to say Jesus. That's the black Jesus. <laughs> Every year is crazy, man. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Woe means destruction. Destruction to the world and they that dwell in the world. Read. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. Their sword and their destruction is draw nigh. It's coming. It's coming. That's what he's saying. It's coming. Read. 
And one people shall stand up to fight against another. One people shall stand up to fight against another. Russia is going to stand up to fight against Ukraine. America is going to stand up to fight against China. It's going to happen. They're going to call it war. This is going to call World War Three. It's going to happen. I was talking. We were talking. In, we was in clubhouse last night. I'm telling you, I cannot stand a dumb question. This dumb question said there is no nuclear weapon in the Bible. So, you know, some of our people are so stupid. They actually think all these weapons, these people spend trillion dollars create this weapon. They actually weapon, they actually believe none of these weapons are ever going to be used. You're stupid. So you actually think, I'm going to put a gun in your backyard. You actually think I'm never going to use that gun? You, believe, you actually believe that? I don't know, man. I don't know. what the, I don't know. We fall so low. Man, we jack, Christianity jacked us up. Read. And swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition what among is a sword men. To the, what is a sword to them in their hand? The M16. I don't, even have, I don't even think they have M16 today. They have something more sophisticated than M16. They got those AK-47, those 9 millimeters in their waist. Those are the weapons they have in their hand. Read. For there shall be sedition among men and invading what? one another. Hey, I'm sorry. That's a big word. What is the word sedition mean? Can I, can I see it, please? Because that's a big word for me. That's a big word for me. I went to public school. Come on, brother. Sedition. He said, hey, hey, with that scripture again, there shall be what? For there shall be sedition among men. There shall be sedition among men. Hey, put that up. Go up. Can you see that, officer? Uh, can you put it on this one? <sighs> you got to put it on this TV. Put it on I this got it. Man. Sedition. Conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or monarch. Hmm. Read the scripture again. For there shall be sedition among men. So you're going to have men that rebel against the government. Then we see that in uh, January 6th. There shall be sedition among men. What else? And invading one another. They're going to invade one another. They're going to invade one another. Russia invade Ukraine. They're going to invade one another. And I guarantee you, he's going to invade much more. Read. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. Mm -hmm. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. The course of their actions shall stand what? And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. They have chemical weapon. Russia already threat America with chemical weapon. Why? Because they got because because of their weak chemical weapon, they think they got power. That's what he said. With that again, they shall what? And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. In their power, because they got weapon. That's what I keep telling you. Our weapon is the Bible, brothers and sisters. That's the only weapon most, most right now. That's the only weapon most I got want us to have. And believe it or not, that's the biggest weapon in the earth. That's the biggest weapon in the earth, the Bible you see in front of you. That's the only weapon you need. With the Bible, you're going to take this place down. Believe that. You don't need no gun. You don't need no knife. Trust me. All you need is the Bible. The word of the living God. Because the Bible said the word of God is fire. The word of God, when you speak it, guess what? The angels. I just, I just, you activated the angels. You activate the angels. Then we just read, pray for the destruction of your enemy. Then we just read, Christ said, the judge said, you know what? I got to revenge this widow. I got to revenge this widow. Read. What verse you want? Verse 17. Read. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. You hear that? A man shall desire to go to a city and shall not be able. The war zone. You want to leave the war zone, you won't be able to. Read, 
For because of their pride. Deep, deep, deep. That's happening right now. Yeah, that's happening with, with right now. People, with our people in Ukraine right now. <clears throat> they can't leave. Leave? For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed. You see what he said? Because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. Trouble. All you can have to say, I am not going to join NATO. But because they're so prideful, he didn't want to, he's like, no, I'm not going to say it. Okay, then you're going to get invaded. That's what this is all about. The media is not telling you that, but that's what this is all about. Read. The houses shall be destroyed. The house shall be destroyed. And men shall be afraid. Yep. Then, you, then, we, then we see that in the news. Then we see that in the news. Men got to leave their wife and kids because they told them they cannot leave. The whole city is afraid. It's wanting fear. Read. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. You hear that? Now, you know what's so heavy about this? Ukraine used to be part of Russia. Ukraine is right next door to Russia. He said a man that's going to have pity on his neighbor. They're going there, dropping bomb, killing, murdering. Remember that, that video we saw on Sabbath where the tank just rolled over that? It targeted that car. <laughs> just rolled Did you over you see it. that thing? Yeah. No pity on their neighbor. No pity on their neighbor. Brothers, that's the we reading the Bible. This is for your dumb Christian who don't think that that's in the Bible. Read. But shall destroy their houses with the sword. Shall destroy their What is the sword today? The missiles. If you look at the capital of, what is that? Kiev? Ky 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 Kiev. They're destroying it with the missile. Read. And spoil their goods. And what? And spoil their goods. And spoil their goods. Read. Because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Wait, 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 wait. What what you just read? Did you you know as I'm as I'm as you're talking, I'm as you read, I'm talking, I keep missing my place. Verse uh the bottom of 19. Read that bottom of 19 again, what you just read. But shall destroy their houses with the sword. They're gonna destroy their house with the sword and spoil their goods. Why are they gonna spoil their good? Because of the lack of bread. Because of what? Because of the lack of bread. Then we see that today in America. Some of these grocery stores start running out of food because of the lack of... Hey, you know what's so heavy about this? Isn't that the same thing question in Matthew 24? Same exact thing. Read. And for great tribulation. For great tribulation. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. God said he's going to call all of them to reverence them. He's going to tell you why. Read. Which are from the rising of the sun. From the south, from the east, and Libanus. Libanus is uh, Lebanon. Read. To turn themselves one against another. To do what? To turn themselves one against another. To do what? To turn themselves one against another. Then why the hell are we praying for them for? What the hell is wrong with you? Who the hell raised you? <laughs> you try to stop prophecy. God said he's going to make them turn against each other. But here come the nigger. No, God, don't do that. I'm going to pray for them. What's wrong with you? Read. And he's going, God is going to tell you why he's doing this. Read. And repay the things that they have done to them. God says he's going to repay the thing they have done to them. Who do you think that them is? Israel. You know, you know what's so beautiful about this? Oh, man, I can read this. This makes make my teeth white. The war that's going to run now. Is because of you. Right. Woo -wee. You see, this is the thing. You don't know how special you are. You don't know how special you are. God said, I'm going to make them turn against each other because for you. Because you are the son of the living God. Right. They are the nation mean nothing to God. They're nothing. That's why the Bible said they're nothing. They're like a drop of water from a bucket. They're nothing. God said, if I have to kill the whole earth for you, that's what I'm going to do. Read. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. You hear that? God said, because of what they did to my chosen. Oh, man. Some of you forget what they did to us. 
Man, some of you forget. That's why they hate the Israelite. Because every, the Israelite, every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, we're going to remind them what they did. That's right. We're going to remind you what they did because you forgot what they did. They give you Christianity. All of a sudden, you forgot what they did. Now you're praying for them. That's our job as leaders, to remind the people what they did to them. Read. So will I do also and recompense in their bosom. You hear what God said? God said the same thing they do to you, he's going to do to them. It's called justice. God did not say, oh, let them apologize. God did not say, oh, give them a 40 acres and a mule. No. It's called justice. It's called revenge. God is a just God. It's called revenge. Some of you don't care about revenge. But God care about revenge. God don't forget. The Negro forget. Because some of you, you cannot think past a year from now. Some of you forget what happened last night. God don't forget. Read. What verse you in? 21? Uh, the bottom of, yes, the bottom of 21. Go but, ahead. Thus saith the Lord God. No, my, read the whole 21 again, please. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, uh -huh. so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God, my right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So when they come against us, we are, we are those innocent blood. We was the innocent blood. We didn't pick up weapon against them. They destroy us. With that, I say shalom. Never give up. 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 Shalom, brothers and sisters. Happy feast. Let's break bread right quick. I got bread and wine. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In honor of our Lord and Savior, the black Messiah, Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. Men of Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. Never, give up. Never, give Never, give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Unity. 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 And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. In the it's what? It's what? It's what? It's what?